morning sports fans. I'm on a standby today from work, so I'm literally in the garage at like eight o'clock in the morning, which for me is uh, unheard of. I don't normally get out of bed until about midday. Anyway, I'm here in the garage and we're gonna make today the seat box. Oh, that's the old one. This one was removed when all the floor was done. Today we're gonna make a new one. Here's my steel on the floor, just about to measure cut and bend but that's going to take some time so I'll just uh, put it on time lapse and see how we go. Finished article, the seat box, uh, 75 mil wide, uh, 50 mil high, 15 mil on the flange, which is the exact size of this box here. So I'm going to try and make it look as stock as possible, so I'm going to put some holes in this one and then get it in it's a little bit longer than it needs to be but I think you'll agree that's the better of the uh, two options it's got to come up into this gap here I'm gonna to have to shape it across to fit against the tunnel and then I also need to notch it out to fit over the top of the exhaust tunnel but that's it made 10 minutes work very happy finished here it is I've shaped it here to obviously fit the inner sill put six wage holes in drilled it for the plug welds it's been shaped to fit around shaped to fit around the exhaust tunnel makes up quite nicely the gearbox tunnel same on this side, and there's a hole here for if you were to want to run the wiring loom or to let water escape. That's it, finished piece. Driver's side, I made the new uh, seat box, which is no longer a seat box, but just a support there with the nice swage holes in the top. That looked nice. This side, passenger side was a standard box uh, that had been repaired um, because it started to crack. That wasn't an issue because I wasn't going to be using this for a seat mount because uh, I've got the seat mounts in here now. But just looking at it, it just didn't look in keeping with the other one. It looked a little bit out of place, old dated. So I took that out today, drilled out the spot welds. Uh, also finished up around the gearbox tunnel where it needed to, to, to weld to the gearbox tunnel and the floor pack underneath that. So that came out which was quite nice uh, and then I spent the afternoon making this bad boy. Uh, made it the same way as I made the other one, just one mil steel, bent around, measured, uh, shaped to get the contour right. This side was a bit trickier because you've got the, uh, the bend there as it comes up around the floor. Uh, so that was quite difficult to make. But uh, it's all done now. You can see. Welded in, spot welded. Uh, both sides. It's all it. Matches up with the other side. Looks good. Here's the back seat stay, as you can see. What I've done is just basically cut the tube to the right length, uh, use the angle grinder just to taper the edges in a little bit to follow the contour of the inner sill, uh, and also the gearbox tunnel because it's slightly contoured there. Uh, bent the plates just to fit the contour as well, and then I've welded the seat bar 
into the plate initially and then I've welded on the seat mount with the captive nut correct distance between the two welded on the back side and now I've just tacked the plates in both sides there and there just to give me the right angle and the right distance from the firewall and to make sure it's all square and from the seat box it's all square in looks a little bit off regarding the floor but I don't think the floor is this bit it's creating a bit of a shadow looks like it's a little bit off but it's completely square so now I'm just going to seam weld around the edges here just to weld all that into the car and that's the back side done there's the front side with the uh, engine mount and engine mounts and seat mounts in uh, this side is a little bit different because of the gearbox tunnel has to step up quite a bit to mount into there puts the seat a little bit higher but uh, we can look at that so I've seam welded round the uh, back base of the seat stay There and there, the other side's done. Let's take off this nut. So, you can see it's all welded in. The seat mount, just mounted, just to see where the seat's going to fit. So, I need to start looking at making the front seat mount now for this side. Welding that in. Boots coming on. It's getting there. Yeah, baby. We have the seat mount tube. As you can see, it's cut to fit nicely in the width. I just tack the plates on to start with, bent the angles of the plates to the contour of the gearbox tunnel. Same with the sill side, just tack that on. Uh, and now we're just gonna weld the whole thing up round nice ready put the seat brackets on weld them brackets on and then we can weld it in it's welded there we go can you see both sides they did the inside as well just gonna grind that back no need to do the inside just for added security I guess looks nice nearly there okay finished working on the seat bars today passenger side front rail uh, I had a bit of an issue with this bracket in the fact that I measured twice as you should do I welded once and for some reason it was in the wrong place <laughs> it was uh, about a centimeter too far up the shaft how I managed that, I have absolutely no idea. I was in a bit of a rush, had to get out of here, and uh, yeah, don't know. Made a hash. Anyway, cut it off, ordered some new ones. Uh, now it's in, it's in line with the other one. It's welded in properly. Also welded in the foot plates to the gearbox tunnel, and also on this side to the inner sill. This one was a little bit close to the hole. Wasn't sure how happy I was with that, but it's gone in quite nicely. And behind you can feel the penetration, the weld as well. So quite nice welding. Holding it all in nice and tight. So yeah. So many moons later, back with the brackets to fit them into the seat bars. Um, the width of the seat bars are obviously going to be determined by these mounting holes in the seat bracket itself uh, this is a motormech one that came with the motormech seats i'm not entirely sure if there's a standard size between the holes but i've got 29.8 between the centers of the holes uh, the back one here and the back one here and the front one here and front one here it's the same distance 29.8 is nearly 300 mil uh, but yeah that's going to determine where they go i'll show you here you can see the bracket is now in. Uh, lines up nicely there. Also lines up nicely there and there. 
So that's it. So that's how you fit your seat bars, and then these nuts will just go through. Well, not these ones are a bit long, but they go through. The width of my holes are about 400, but the width can be determined because obviously there's like an elongated hole where the captive nut can slide, so you, you are given a little bit of adjustment for the width. It's mainly you have no adjustment here. Um, about 29.7 from the back of the front hole to the back of the second hole 29.7 so I guess that was the same width as for these holes but as I say the brackets are going to determine where you put uh, your seat supports so you kind of need the brackets and you kind of need the seats the height of these seat bars is also going to be determined by the, uh, the seats that you have, if you've got bucket seats with the top harnesses and the holes in the seats, then the, the seat belt is going to come around here and that's going to come back down towards the seat belt, um, the seat belt bar here. And this angle has to be within regulation as well, especially if you're doing some kind of uh, motorsport. And I think that angle is around 20 degrees, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the seat bars complete, driver's side and passenger side. Brilliant, job done. Happy days.